So just following up on the stuff that we'd spoke about in um, in our podcast chat, one of the things that jumped at yeah. me was was I've actually got on the screen behind me. No one made a statue of a committee. Um, and that's to kind of remind me to be decisive about stuff because you do have to be because the reality is no one made a statue of a committee. So when it comes to my work, I feel like sometimes that's that's important to actually just make a call and just stick to it and hope yeah. that everyone's with you on that journey. Yeah. But teamwork, mm-hmm. you know, when you're presenting yourself to the public, um, it's very much you, but you know that there's this massive team of people behind you, right? In your ears, in the gallery, on the studio floor. Mm. I want to just talk about that a little bit. You were actually um, somebody who I think broadcast, right, um, from a remote scenario, the first person that did a show like that during COVID. Oh, so yeah. that would have taken so, you completely um, out of your comfort zone into a totally different thing. And how did you find that? And how did yeah. you adapt oh to going from this big team to then just you? Um, oh, the pandemic. Ugh. Um, so basically, when lockdown happened, I was pregnant. So technically still working. I hadn't started maternity leave yet. So I was really, nobody knew what was happening in those early days. And I was desperate to keep working. I didn't want to sit at home. Um so Sky News sent uh, a camera uh, to my house uh, and I had to learn how to set it up and started broadcasting from my front room in into the program. Like, you know, yeah, it was incredible. So I've got a newfound respect for anyone that does anything technical in TV. <laughs> um, and I know that I can I can do that full time. Oh, my word. My Ben, like talk about us being a team. He was my sound technician. He was my cameraman. <laughs> I just couldn't work after this stuff in the beginning. So I started doing some broadcasts from home. And then we had this idea to be the first channel to do a completely remote broadcast. So the director was directing the programme from his study. Um, the producer was producing the programme from her kitchen in whatever part of the country she was in. I was broadcasting from my front room in South East London, where I was living at the time. You know, so all these different people were all doing it from their home. Nothing, nothing was coming from Sky Studios. It was all done remotely. And we did a half hour programme talking to people around the country about what else about COVID. Um, But yeah, and it was the, yeah, it was the first totally remote broadcast. So that was quite scary (laughs) because, you know, do you remember how patchy we all discovered how patchy our wi-fi was we thought we had brilliant wi-fi and internet until the pandemic hit and everybody was on wi-fi and you just realized how dodgy the connection could be and how things could drop out at a second um so yes we did that but for a long time yeah i was my own sound technician producer camera woman i did the lot from home um yeah but how much, much did you much miss? prefer it in my whizzy studio now. I mean, we all we all talk about, you know, off the back of COVID, that that team interaction thing. I've got a startup company and trying to encourage people back into the office and 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 build a mm. company atmosphere, build like an ethos, mm. build a kind of, you know, a system whereby we're all sort of in it together. And that's hard to do when mm. people are working remotely. Um, you know, yeah. how, how much do you get out of just being around that team? Because it's definitely something I miss from TV because it's such a big part of of your world, isn't it? Being a team. Yeah. Particularly in a newsroom where it's so buzzy and so busy. Yeah. And I feel like... That's where I need to be because conversations that are ha- being ha- had on the different desks, like the home desk, which deals with home news, the foreign desk, um, the correspondents, like they're all talking to each other over computer screens going, have you heard this? Have you seen? You just pick it all up and it, you know, I just think you have to be in it. And my husband is um, in marketing and branding and again, his team coming together together they thrive from being together because they're creative. So you yeah. bounce ideas off each other. It's so hard to do on Zoom or over the phone or on a Teams call. I think it's so, so important. And I do feel that this whole remote working is great for some people, particularly people who have a family or who are carers or, you know, have got other things yeah. going on in their life. But I feel like for the younger generation, they need to be in amongst it. I don't think I'd be where I am today if I wasn't 
in a newsroom at all hours of the day as a runner, as a planner, as a producer, as a junior reporter, just in it. You just pick up so much off colleagues. It doesn't even have to be official meetings, does it? It's just talking to people and being in it. And I really worry about this next generation who think, oh, actually, I quite like working from home and, you know, I save on my commute. And I get all of that. There are, you know, cost pressures involved and, and what have you. And there are various reasons why it works better for people to work at home. But I just feel like to really, really thrive, not just survive in the world of work, you have to be in with your colleagues. And I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't do what I do. I couldn't be where I am today without that. The other thing I want to touch on is this prioritization as well in the day, because um, I think this is a thing that successful people share, the ability to prioritize. You're talking about now having a show that's an hour long. How do you prioritize mm-hmm what you place at the top of that running order versus what you place as your and finally and actually what gets ditched. How do you make the decisions about, you know, the balance of a thing based on prioritization? Yeah, Yeah, it's really hard. Um, So for instance, you know, I've had to uh, cancel an interview today because I couldn't fit it in. I'm desperately trying to um, reschedule it because I really want to do it. Um, Our show is about what the UK is talking about. So Obviously, there are stories that are leading the news agenda. We launched a show called The UK Tonight when this war in the Middle East erupted. Not ideal timing to launch a show called The UK Tonight, but it is something that everyone was talking about. So we sort of took the approach of what do pe- what are people in the UK talking about when it comes to this new war in the Middle East? How is it affecting them, whether it be the Jewish community, the Palestinian community, those who have got loved ones, you know, caught yeah. up in it? You know, we've been speaking to families who've got um, family members trapped inside Gaza. You know, we've been talking to people whose loved ones have been taken hostage. So we had to adapt and do all of that. Um, But in terms of, you know, what we decide goes in, we monitor what people are interested in on, you know, in terms of what they watch on the channel, but also what they click online on our website. So you know, there's no such thing as a traditional news channel anymore. It's TV, it's podcast, it's online, it's Snapchat, it's Instagram, it's all of that. But the beauty of that is you can track it and see what people are interested in. And I think we're very conscious of that. And we take in a lot of viewer feedback and a lot of um, research into, you know, what people want to hear. And I think the beauty of our show is it is a dedicated hour to the UK. It can be the weird and the wonderful. It can be, you know, the advances in science and technology could be something that's going on with the government but how it affects real people cost of living uh, accommodation crisis so we sort of make a call on it day by day as to you know what leads and also you know i did an interview with caitlin jenner which doesn't immediately scream uk news but you know a bit like with the the death of matthew perry recently friends Mm. was such a big part of our lives growing up i know it's an american tv show but you know it was such a big part of popular culture in this country as the Kardashians are for, you know, the, you know, the generation after us, maybe for our generation as well. I didn't watch it. Did you? No. But I felt like, I, <laughs> oh, okay. but I felt I like, like but I felt like I should But we have know done. all about them, don't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we know who they are. So it's all of that. It's, um, you know, what's going on in terms of culture as well as what's going on in the news agenda. But it can be quite tough to fit it all in. We do have to be quite picky, but I always try and fit other stuff in later in the week. I don't like to let anything go. Have you had um, Ollie Moore's legs on yet? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to demonstrate for them for me on camera? I can't You're the do best it. Ollie Merz You're the legs. only one. You're the only one. <laughs> We'll leave that. We'll leave that just up there in the ether for people to go. What the hell are you they talking about? You have to tell about? people what it means. <laughs> oh, that was in the heyday of the X Factor when we'd have it on in our flat, and Ollie Mers was competing at the time, wasn't he? Or was yeah. he a guest on the X Factor? I can't no, remember. he must but his have dance been competing. Was the Ollie Mers crazy legs? <laughs> and you and had it GT down. GT could do an pat. incredible you impression. No, you did. <laughs> No, you. Wild no, Saturday me, no, nights you. at our flat. I know. Crazy <laughs> times. We were living it up. All right, Trouble. Lovely to catch up. Mwah. Lots of love. Good luck with Stuart Broad. So good to see you, GT.